Hello and welcome to the channel. I recently came back from a trip to Korea and Japan and used the opportunity to really explore the toy world, going to quite popular spots as well as hidden gems recommended by the locals with the hopes of expanding my ever-increasing toy collection. And I was successful! So successful that I actually had to empty my suitcase and put all my clothes and stuff into a duffel bag because there was just no more space. I'm very excited to show you what I got and talk about some of the places that I got them from. Um, before we get started, have you subscribed to the channel yet? Make sure to subscribe down below, like the video if you like it, and comment. I love reading all your comments. Um, and with that being said, let's get into the haul! A lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. The first stop was Seoul in Korea. I stumbled upon this place while I was just wandering around on the first day with my partner and my friend, and I just saw this giant pink vintage looking shop, so I had to go in. This was Paper Doll Mate Atelier, which is the showroom for the design group Afrocat. Their store was insane. The rubber toys of the 1950s were the direct inspiration for these dolls, but they were recreated from the childhoods of the designers who created them. Airbrushed and hand painted for a personal touch. First day first doll was Lavender Sally. I had originally just grabbed just like a basic um, one that wasn't in a box, but when I asked the shop assistant, she gave me one that was in this amazing packaging. And I think I'm just gonna display her in her box. Um, I do wanna take her out there just so I can have a quick look. Up close, you can see the airbrushing and the hand painting. Such soft textures and colors give this doll such a vintage, old timey look. I purchased Lavender Sally for 42,000 won, which is roughly 49 Australian dollars. Side note, unfortunately this doll has been recast and reproduced in a bootleg format and are on marketplaces like AliExpress, which is really sad. I highly urge you to get a legitimate version of this doll or any of their stationary works. When I was creating my itinerary for Seoul, the top top of my list was Palala Toy Museum in Hongdae. Um, I found it online when I was looking for like, the best vintage toy shops. Um, it's really hard to find. I mean, it was for me. I'm very directionally challenged. Um, so I ended up being... We ended up walking into an office building. It was very embarrassing. It's basically just like a stairway that leads to a basement and it's very inconspicuous, I guess that's the word. Um, but you open the door and it's just an emporium, floor to ceiling of just toys everywhere. And they're from... Japan, Korea, UK, US, from so many different time periods and so I was very excited just having a look through everything um, but everything there is for sale as well so I had to grab something. I'd always kept a mental note that the next time I went to Japan I would get myself something Peko-chan. Falala had such an extensive collection of Peko-chan though, I had to buy something. This doll is called Peko doll wearing a striped ribbon in her hair. If you're unfamiliar with Peko-chan, she is the mascot for Fujiya. Super quick history lesson, uh, Japan in 1945 to 1952 had quite a severe food shortage crisis. Um, it was a domino effect from the government controlled food rationing during World War II, which later became the responsibility of the Americans during occupation. The destruction of farmland from Allied bombings during the war, as well as the liberation of colonies like Korea and Taiwan meant that Japan didn't have any food, basically. In order to get vitamins and such out to the population, Fujiya created milk-based candies to provide calcium and sugar. Peko-chan was drawn up as the mascot for this. Her design is heavily inspired by 1940s American cartoons, which is kind of cute. Her name is in reference to the Japanese onomatopoeia of Peko Peko, which, in quotes, the creaky sound a starved body makes. Oh my freaking god, it's terrifying! I got her for 50,000 won, um, that's roughly about 60 Australian dollars, which is insane because I've seen this doll online for $190. The owner was super kind and super sweet, super patient with my horrendous Korean, and even gave me a little Disney figure as a present, which is so kind. Lala is open on Fridays, Saturdays and Sundays, so if you're in Hongdae, I would highly recommend going to check it out. 
Something I wanted to get while I was abroad was a doll specific to the country that I'm in. So being in Korea, I had to get a Mimi doll, which is Korea's first fashion doll that came out in the 1980s. Um, so I made my way to Toys R Us. My partner went and had a sit down while I had a sprut. I kid you not, I walked over to him like this. <laughs> a lot of toys. <laughs> These are so cute. I couldn't pass them by. Mimi in collaboration with Senrio. I get one when you can get all of them. <laughs> Though the downside is I spent a good 15 minutes finding the best made ones of the dolls that were on the shelves because the factory defects were insane. Almost every single one of them had some sort of defect and I was trying to find which one was less defected, I guess. But hey, I guess that's the nature of factory dolls, but still really annoying. I also grabbed this more traditional Mimi, which is in Hanbok, which is the traditional cultural dress of Korea. Super cute and quite uniquely Korean, which is what I was initially after. I'm a simple woman. I see Pop Mart, I buy Pop Mart. Um, Pop Mart in Hongdae, I think, had just opened. So of course, I had to go in and buy some blind boxes. Blind box figures I got. Twilight Sparkle from the My Little Pony Pretty Me Up series. My Spaceship from Lilios City Wild Boy. Melting River from Azura Spring Fantasy. La Boo Boo Captain from Monster Space Adventure. And lastly, Daydreaming King Garfield. At this point in the trip, we hopped over to Japan and started in Osaka. First place that I went to was Mandarake in Umeda. Mandarake is the place for all things collectible. It's a chain-like second-hand store, but is specifically for collectibles. The first figure I grabbed was a Love Life figure of Minami in the School Idol Festival series. I've said it before on my channel, but I'm less of an anime fan than I am a figure and character design fan. I love how dynamic the pose is, as well as the small bird theme. I love birds, that's a pretty known fact. Um, it's so energetic and so whimsical and exactly what I love to see from sculptors. I actually saw this figure for sale in Seoul and it was $200, which I wasn't interested in paying that price, so I just left it. Um, but I got it from here for 10,000 yen, which is $100. So a definite steal. The second figure I grabbed, you might recognize if you were a teenager in the 2010s, it's Makoto Tachibana from the anime Free. I had a huge crush on him when I was a teenager. Yeah, the first season of Free was the last year for the boys at school. Same with me when it was airing. Second season was them at uni or further education. That's the same as me. They went to Australia. I live in Australia. They're just boys! Boys, where? I feel like it would be a kick to the face if I didn't get it for my teenage self. Yeah, it's just memories, I guess. Nostalgia. The third figure I got was an absolute fluke. I saw her when I was walking out of the shop. This is one of my top tier grails. I am obsessed with the figures from this game. It's called Seventh Dragon 2020. I have one from the game already and I need more. <laughs> um, this figure is of the samurai class character Tsubaki Kujo, um, but this figure is specifically the alternate coloring, which is the one that I was after. I love this figure. Specifically, I love the orange, green, and gray used in this figure because I think it looks like aged copper. Very random, but I love it. Just like when in Korea, I wanted to get a country-specific doll. Specifically, I was on the hunt for a Lika doll, which is the most popular doll in Japan. I ended up landing on this astronaut Lika when I went to Toys R Us. It was the only non-princessy one. 
princessy is fine but it's just not what I was after. As well, I'm obsessed with the show For All Mankind and I feel like she kind of looks like Ellen Waverley. <laughs> I also picked up this 2020 Olympics leaker and I feel like you can kind of guess why. I got this from the Mandrake in Akihabara. As well, I also grabbed this basic secondhand leaker for just $2. as well a little dress. No idea what this is going to fit, but I just really thought it was so cute. <laughs> also grabbed these insert eyes. As well, while I was in Akihabara, I also went to the Ami Ami store. I ordered two figures, so I shipped them to my parents. The first figure I had shipped is in collaboration with the British Museum and the manufacturer Mythios. The idea is to take relics from different museums and turn them into figures. Time Compass is the transformation of the British Museum's equinoctial dial. She is by far the most beautiful figure I own. Her paintwork and the artist's use of colour is just incredible and the details in the model is just insane. Down to, you know, the tiny star on her fingers to the fact that the, the dial actually works, like it spins. I am continuously finding out new things about this figure and even while I was filming, I noticed that in sunlight, you can see that there is actually pearlescent shimmer that's all through the hair and the clothes. And I didn't know that. I didn't know that until I was filming this, and so I'm just, oh, I love it. The second figure I got was a Star Trek Vulcan science officer from Bishojo. We all know that this is just a feminized Spock from the original 1966 Star Trek, even wearing the first series' go-go skirt. I love the fact that they gave her like a really short Vulcan haircut. Um, I love the little communicator that's on her belt. I love this figure and I already have pre-ordered the matching Uhura. I did that like last night. Shh. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm very excited to get that one and have them together. While in Tokyo, we went to Akihabara. I don't know why I went. I didn't like it the first time I went didn't like it this time. Poor, it was locked nope. in my zip. Nope, 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 stop talking, go to jail. Yeah, I just didn't really enjoy my time there. It put me in a bad mood for the rest of the day. Yeah, um, I met up with my friend who lives in Tokyo and had a whinge about it to him. And he's like, why'd you even go? Um, well, that's where the stuff is. Like, that's where everyone recommends. And he's like, no, that's for weeboos. And... I said what it is what I was after and he's like, oh no, go to Nokano Broadway, that's where everyone else goes for that kind of stuff. So he organised to take me there a couple of days later and it was, oh it was amazing. <laughs> it's basically just a, like a multi-story, just arcade, I guess. Arcade as in like shopping arcade, not gaming arcade. Um, full of just vintage toy shops and secondhand shops and um, there's shops for things like the gacha toys. People will sell them back to stores. Um, so yeah, I got like quite a, quite a few things. Um, yeah, it was really fun. I got this Rohan figure. He's from the series uh, Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. I got that for $10. He is secondhand, so I did have to brush off some dust and stuff, but he's in pristine condition and I'm very happy to have him. He comes with a little satchel for his manga drawings and a little camera. I grabbed a Kaon figure. This is the windmill guitar rift figure of Yui. I got this brand new, um, unopened for $50. I wish I had the name of the shop, I don't think I'm ever gonna find it online, but I went into this like femme shop, uh, girly shop, and it was such a breath of fresh air. 
after being in Akihabara where every single feminine character is just overtly sexualized, it was nice to go into a shop that is just kind of girlhood. As well, I also grabbed this noodle topper Miku. I saw this in Sydney for $40 before I left and got this one for $10. I grabbed these tiny little South Park figure charms and grabbed the whole set for $10. It includes Cartman, Kenny, Kyle, Stan and Butters. This figure is actually probably older than you as it was made in 1998 for the Phantom Menace, specifically referring to the scene where Maul just unabashedly tries to run over Anakin. He comes with his figure and he also comes with a speeder, something you or I are never going to see. He's been locked away for 24 years and I will continue to relinquish your freedom, box boy. Throughout the whole trip, I picked up some miscellaneous items here and there. Those items include a Moogie prize figure from the show Kaon, but specifically this is the movie figure, this is the one when they go to London. I got her brand new for 600 yen, which is $6. I grabbed a Chibi Yusa figure from Sailor Moon to match my Usagi that I already have. I picked up some prints from different places. I grabbed two Ashitaka prints from Studio Ghibli's Princess Mononoke. I grabbed a handful of Miffy prints from Dick Bruner, as well as a Miffy in kimono from the Miffy Sakura Kitchen in Arashiyama, which is near Kyoto. When I was in Harajuku, I grabbed a mega pack of prints from the artist Mori Chak, who had an installation there. These prints are of his character Gloomy Bear. Um, the whole shtick of Gloomy Bear is that Chak believes that humans and wild animals are not compatible in domesticated relationships and so shouldn't be forced to go against their nature. Um, hence Gloomy Bear always just beating the crap out of humans. As well, I also grabbed this Menhera Chan X Gloomy Bear acrylic stand that was also at the installation. And with that, that's everything, I think. Yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> I forgot to film an outro and now I look like an absolute gremlin um, so voiceover it is thank you so much for watching the haul I'm sorry for how long this took to go up I know that I posted on Instagram saying that I wanted to do this a very long time ago life just got in the way as it tends to do um, so I really appreciate you checking out the video let me know which item was your favorite and what your hobby or special interest grail item would be Make sure to let me know in the comments below. And swell, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, it would mean a lot. And with that, I will see you in the next video.